Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today we're going to talk about the components of a NURBS surface. Very basic, like level one NURBS modeler kind of stuff here. Uh, I wanted to give a, get a video out that is for the super noob to Maya when it comes to NURBS and how to use them. First of all, to learn how to use NURBS, you need to know what they're made of and what you can do to it. Uh, what you can use to manipulate a NURBS surface to make something. So first we're going to create NURBS primitives and we have all these options here to start with. But first that word NURBS, that's a weird word. What it stands for is non-uniform rational B-spline. I'm not even going to begin to pretend like I understand anything about that. It's math. That's all you need to know. Math and equations and all sorts of geometry stuff. Uh, but we're just worrying about the components of a NURBS surface. So I'm going to start with a sphere. Hit the 5 key to go to shaded view. So here's my sphere. Nice and round. Let's say I want to adjust this sphere so it's not quite so round. What do I do? If you right click on the sphere, the NURBS sphere, and you hold it down, you have this marking menu. And the main things we're looking at here, there's lots of stuff here, but the main things we're looking at are these options that are arrayed in a circle around my cursor. Not even all of these are going to be really useful. They all have their uses, of course, but they all have, not all of them are editable components that we can use to model something. Uh, but first, let's look at control vertex. This is probably the most important one. Control vertex, otherwise known as CV, if I move my mouse over the control vertex option while my right click is held down and let go I enter CV uh, component mode or control vertex component mode I'm gonna hide the grid so let me change the background color here we go what's best black or gray let's go with black so hopefully in the video is not too compressed where you're watching it you can see all these little purple or pink dots that are arrayed around my sphere almost like satellites around the earth and all these dots are CVs so you can click and move and you can see how it adjusts the surface of the sphere you can think of them almost like little magnets and when you move this magnet out here the surface being stretched out in that direction being attracted by its magnetic pull and it's not uh, attached to the surface like a polygon uh, vertex is. It's a control vertex that is kind of influencing the surface. And that can change based on your surface degree, which we can get into later. But I mainly want to go over these different components. So CVs, you can select more than one at a time. Hold shift and select more. Add it to your selection. Hold control and you can deselect CVs from your selection. And move them around. So that's CVs in a really brief nutshell, like lesson one, CVs. If I right click on my sphere and choose hull, H-U-L-L, hull, I get this kind of cage effect. And if you notice, if I go back to CVs and switch between them, all these hulls or cage lines, whatever you want to call them, are using the CVs to indicate where they are. And what, why that is, is a hull is essentially an entire row of CVs I'm selecting. If I click this hull, I'm actually selecting this entire row of CVs, and I can move the entire row at once. You can scale it, rotate it, anything you want to do. Anything you can do to a CV, you can do to a hull. You're just doing it to the entire row of CVs. Stretch. And one thing about NURBS that's handy when you're adjusting CVs or hulls or anything, if you use the number, I mean, sorry, the arrow keys, you can cycle between the hulls. So right now I'm using left and right arrow keys to go between, like here, here, here. Like so, really quickly you can just adjust these points. If I go back to Control Vertex mode and select this vertice and use my up and down arrow keys, I'm going around left and right I'm going up and down so you can use the the arrow keys to get around really quickly especially if you know exactly what you're wanting to do and how you want to do it 
So CVs and hulls are the main are the main things that you can like actually move around in 3D space and change the shape of a nerve surface. So right click and now we have other things. We have isoparm. If I choose isoparm, all my CVs and hulls are gone, but I can click on any of these lines and select it. You can see it highlights yellow. I can click on one and kind of drag out here. And I'm not moving the, the line, I'm not moving the isoparm. I'm actually just selecting a different uh, line on the surface. If I let go, I get this little dotted line. So I'm not adding, I'm sorry, I'm not moving the isoparm I started on. I'm just using that as a starting point and then I'm dragging out to another spot on the surface to highlight it. So for example, if I wanted to insert a new isoparm, I could or if I wanted to detach the surface, like split this surface in two, you don't have to do it right there on these lines that are already provided. You can indicate a different area, say here, and detach it or whatever. So isoparms are not something you can just click and change the shape of. They're mainly for selecting to do other things, to do other NURBS tools, which we have the Edit NURBS menu here. We have lots of different things that we're going to have videos going over eventually. So all these things here, not all of them, but you know, certain things here use isoparms. Certain of them use right click and do surface patch. Certain tools use surface patches. So you can select these different patches of the surface and do certain things to them. You can't move a patch just by moving it like you can a CV, but it's something that you can select and do something to and from this edit nerves menu. And then right click and you choose surface point. Similar to the isoparm, if I just click and drag, it gives me this kind of crosshair effect. And if I let go, I get this point here, which again is not actually there, it's just kind of highlighting that point, but also is giving me an indication of the two isoparms or two lines on the surface that converge on that point. So if I wanted to add a point right here, it's telling me that it would also need these two isoparms added to create that point. So surface point is again a way to choose a spot on the surface to do something to, such as insert isoparms or insert knots or whatever you want to call it, or say detached surfaces or whatever. You can use these different kind of highlighting components to choose spots to do things with. And again, you can hold shift and add multiple of these things and that's a surface point so surface patch control vertex isoparm hull surface uv uh, let me deselect all that stuff there we go surface uv this is pretty much indicating all these points at these uh converging lines are the uvs of this surface and a uv if you don't know it's a way of indicating two-dimensional space, like for textures, which we haven't gone over yet. Well, as of this recording, we haven't gone over yet. Uh, eventually, I'm going to have videos going over everything. You know, it's just going to take time to make them all. But really briefly, like in 3D space, let me change my background back to the room. In 3D space, you know, we have X, Y, and Z for height, uh, width, and depth. And for 2D space, you just have height and width and they indicate 2D space with UV like they indicate 3D space with XYZ and there are such things as 3D textures which you know it's a little different and they say oh well you need UVW for the 3D texture space but the vast majority of the time it's called UVs 2D texture space or coordinates are UVs and 3D uh, coordinates are XYZs or <laughs> whatever you call them uh, XYZ for 3D, UV for 2D. But these are all UVs or UV points on the surface for, and you can't select them or do anything with them. It's just there to kind of indicate where they are. So yeah, I think that's pretty much the, all the components really briefly. Uh, let me know if anything confused you. I can try and clarify. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, if you like the video, I definitely appreciate it. Subscribe if you have any suggestions for future videos. I definitely appreciate it. And I hope you have a great day, and I'll talk to you guys later.